Hello, everybody. This is Bill McKibben, um, and I'm grateful for the invitation to speak about the climate cost of war in Iraq. Uh, the first thing to remember, of course, is that uh, were it not for our dependence on oil, there probably wouldn't have been a war in Iraq. Um, you know, um, I remember one of the signs that I saw at one of the first demonstrations I attended against that war, and it said, how did our oil get under their sand? That's the that's the bottom line, and it's one of the reasons that many of us work so hard to get us off oil and coal and gas and onto peaceful energies, sun and wind. But you've asked a series of good questions, more specific ones, about um, the effect, uh, uh, the climate effect of that war and wars in general. And I, I will do my best to provide uh, a, a little bit of an answer. I'm very grateful to my colleague, Vanessa Arcara, and to our great friends at Oil Change International, uh, a Washington think tank, who have done some really good work on trying to answer precisely these questions. And that's the source of these numbers. Um, and the numbers are so large because the money spent and the fuel burned over there was enormous. Uh, Oil Change International projects that total U.S. spending on the Iraq war could have covered all the global investment in renewable power generation needed between now and 2030 in order to halt the rise in the planet's temperature. That is, had we spent that money not on bombing Iraq, but on sun and wind, we would have done what we needed to do. Uh, the war itself released at least 141 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent uh, since its inception in March of 2003. Uh, so for instance, that's about the equivalent of adding 25 million cars to the road in the U.S. this year. Uh, if you rank the war in Iraq as a country, uh, pretend that it's a country, in terms of emissions, it would emit more CO2 each year than 139 of the world's nations. Um, that is to say, this one war produces more carbon than 60% of the world's countries. Uh, uh, emissions from are about two and a half times larger than what would be avoided between 2009 and 2016 uh, were California simply to implement the auto emission regulations it's proposed. Um, um, so the other way to look at it is in terms of money. Uh, the $600 billion that Congress put into military operations in Iraq uh, could have built 9,000 wind farms uh, in the U.S. with the uh, capacity to meet a quarter of the world's current electricity demand, other country's current electricity demand. Um, uh, in 2006, the U.S. spent more on the war in Iraq than the whole world spent on investment in renewable energy. Um, that gives you some sense of the scale. Uh, I mean, it's incredibly carbon intensive business war. Um, it's not just the oil well fires and the gas flaring. Uh, it's even things like the boom in cement consumption when you have to repair and rebuild all the things that you blew up and uh, uh, on and on and on. Um, and I think it speaks very powerfully to the fact that, um, well, we can't afford to keep doing this, can't afford it economically, but can't afford it because it takes all the focus and all the energy and all the money that we need to do real things. I wrote a piece this summer saying that if you wanted a war, we've actually got one underway, a war we're not actually fighting back in. Um, um, it's a metaphor, of course, but the war is the war that carbon dioxide is waging on us. Perhaps we're waging it on ourselves since we're the ultimate source of that CO2. Um, in many ways, it's a real war. Obviously, it presents much more of a threat to us than Saddam Hussein ever did. Um, um, we're losing territory daily as ice melts, as islands submerge, as coastlines become... Uh, less habitable. 
Um, we're losing lives daily as disease spreads. We're seeing great destabilization. Not only the war in Iraq destabilized places like Syria, so did um, the biggest drought we've ever measured in the, what we used to call the Fertile Crescent that sent a million Syrian farmers off their land and into the cities and helped destabilize the Assad regime. So on and on and on, um, um, the links between all these sadnesses become clearer and clearer. And our work now is, I think, to focus as hard as we can um, on making sure we don't have more wars and on making sure that the focus that does go with a war is turned instead to real problems. And on the list of real problems, right there at the very top in 72-point type is climate change. So thank you all very much for your work.